doing a different kind of video. It's inspired by the Kevin Ocheng story from Citizen TV. Uh, if you watched the news yesterday. My name is Kevin Ocheng. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Madara Slums mm -hmm. in Kosovo. Mm -hmm. This is where I'm hosted mm -hmm. by my friend. Mm -hmm. In Madara, I have to endure the smell in the slums. I have to endure the filthy state. The smell remains there. There are no proper latrines. And uh, living here, it's uh, degrading. So this is a really, really, really sad story. So we have this graduate from the University of Nairobi who did actuarial science. He graduated with a first class honors and that was in 2017. And since then, he has been looking for a job, not finding any job. And this is really really scary like how do you get like very good marks in primary you work so hard in high school you get like straight A's in everything then you get to campus you study your ass off then you get a first class honors hoping to have like the best 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 job then you come out here you cannot even afford to go for your own graduation so sad right imagine this guy was living at the streets like, what has Kenyan education come to? No, I'm here making this video because I have been thinking I am also in the University of Nairobi, almost graduating, like in the next few months I will be graduating and I'm hoping the market out there will be good for me. But when you look at these people who are already there, when you are already, and they have hustled, like, this hard, had you a melala kwa street, and like it's there really hope for me. Then I was watching some news panel in the morning, then these guys were blaming this guy. They were like, why did you choose actuarial science? There's no market for actuarial science in Kenya. But then why is it being taught in the universities? Like after high school, you are really, really young to know about all this stuff. You're like only 17 years. And then they want you to have like all this information about everything. Uh, you know, after high school, like if you get a good grade in high school and you have to choose for your career, you don't want to do like the career like everyone else is doing. You want to do like the top cream careers. So you will go choose the career with the highest aggregate points. Then, <coughs> sorry, the highest aggregate points, then you'll be like, hey, Juhi, Sikila Mtuenda Kufanya, after campus, I will get a job, I will be successful. Then everyone in the village is expecting you to do like really, really, really nice with your life. So sad, no, I can analyze a in the next few months. Well, I have motive for graduation. Like, unangalia how what you are like. Why, why? Like, I don't even know what to say. But then, it's not right when you blame it on this guy. It's not his fault. This guy worked hard. He has the grades. He qualifies for but But do you know how hard it is this days to get a job? It's like really, really hard. If you don't know anyone, if you're not well connected, then you're not getting any job. You will go apply for, for a job with a person who is less qualified than you are but because their uncle or their aunt or their dad knows this and this person in the company, they will get the job, then what well, will they money, continue applying and applying. That is not connection, it's corruption. Like, this is so hard for me to talk about. Because, you know, I'm one of the 55% of the Kenyans who are not employed. Yeah. Well, um, I have not started looking for a job yet, but from 2017, they have not gotten a job. Usually, like, I <sighs> but then need a solution. And what I think is, if people stopped corruption, 
there would be enough money to create jobs for everyone. If mtu moja hata chukua like billions and billions of money and pockets, the money you would get jobs. It's not like Kenya is poor. Kenya is not poor. The only problem is the the little money we have goes into the pockets of some people. Like always to shake that person you nakata. Why do you have to take billions and billions and billions and take them home? And then nothing is usually done. People, someone will just carry hundred billion, two hundred billion. Then you report them. Then story na live disappears. Then Kenya is like number one forty four of the most corrupt countries in the world. Uh well I don't know. But to my time Nigeria. In Nigeria like it was it was like the most corrupt country in Africa. So if it was the most corrupt country in Africa and not to my time now in the Manisha he corruption in the fine to support a cousin and it's not fair but how you expected to stop corruption if you want a job and you are asked to pay some amount of money to get the job or else kau kitawa kishi kwa street of course you will look for that money and pay and once you start doing corruption it's like so hard to stop so don't blame it on the youth create opportunities for us guys like we want to make some cash for ourselves. We want to be self-dependent. We don't want to be asking for everything. We don't want to get depressed because we can't afford food. Some of us, when we are done with school, our parents can't afford to keep us. Like you can't take, you can't teach, you can't take a kid through the 844 system. That is eight plus four. That is twelve plus four. Sixteen years in school, then they can't feed themselves. It's so sad. Really. Okay, I hope this video is not boring. I was just here airing my views, ranting, telling you guys there is hope out there with the aim. If you believe you're going to get a job, you're going to be successful, you will. Trust me. So thanks for watching. Just leave any comment, rant with me down here and subscribe and share the video with other people when you want to do corruption you may find out party cars see it can you have a crazy i'm not going to finish this if people stopped stealing and worked for their money then everyone would get their fair share